obviously I'm on the way to school. I'm leaving later than I normally do just because I was having a really hard time getting myself moving today. Oh my gosh. Okay, I need to find some energy somewhere for today because I am just feeling really draggy, super draggy. Like I was having a hard time like just putting my clothes on and putting my makeup on today it was a chore. Just everything was super hard today. I don't know what it was. And like, I'm not gonna have very many minutes before the kids come today, but I will have a little bit. I'll have enough to get in there, get myself settled and everything. So it's all good. I already have everything ready for today and tomorrow. And actually the whole week, because since we had conferences, I had time to copy things, to print things while I was in between. So that was really nice. I'm here. I'm gonna get myself parked, get all my stuff loaded in, because I brought some um, Thanksgiving decorations, like little scarecrows and a cornucopia and some gourds. They're gorgeous. <laughs> okay, on that scary little sad pun that I just did, I'm gonna say goodbye for now, and I will see you later. Hello. It is lunchtime. I heated my lunch before I left. So I've got beef and broccoli. It's really good. Okay, so this morning has been really, ooh, very crooked. <laughs> this morning has been really good. For power hour, we started with partners of 10. So it's the two numbers that you can add together to make 10. So like two and eight, six and four, three and seven, like that. Oops, I'm messing up my lunch here. Um, we're thinking a lot of our kids already have this skill. So we're going to try to make a little like mini assessment to kind of gauge how they're doing. But we also want to see the kids that can go beyond up to 10, like pretty quickly without having to struggle very much to figure out the answer. So we're going to make an assessment that has either like two sides, like half and half or front and back where it has adding up to 10 on one part and then adding up to 20 on another part. And we'll see how the kids do on there. And then we can move kids around. There's like a piece of spinach in this, like an extra oops. <laughs> that's funny. Look, I'll show you. I'm like, that's not supposed to be in here. A little piece of spinach because this is beef and broccoli, not beef and spinach. Oh, well, I need my Popeye strength. Maybe that's why there's a piece of spinach in here. Anyway, so I've been kind of thinking about that and I have um, a recording sheet that I'd made for that ball pit game. And so I think I can change the numbers in that and just make it addition sentences where they can just write the answers on their paper. So I think we're gonna do that tomorrow to kind of see how the kids are doing because ugh, the lessons that we did today, I always start out a new lesson section with the iReady lessons that are provided in the teacher toolbox. We did the lessons in there and the kids were just like, most of them, you know, not all of them are just right on it, but most of them are just like, this is like super easy. So they're shouting out the numbers just really fast. I'm like, oh, so some of us that teach the same skill have been kind of talking in, in between things and saying, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? We're like, yeah, we need to figure out some kind of assessment to figure out where they are. And then there are five of us teaching the same section so we can shuffle our kids among the five of us. And then we can focus on what those kids need in each of the groups. I think that's gonna be great because our five sections had all the kids that scored a certain level in number and operations. And so that's what we're all focused on. But some kids are ready to move on and some kids are not. And so we wanna do what's right for each kid, not just a general, we, this is fine. Even if you already know it, that's not the point of this. If they already know it, they need to move on. If they don't already know it, they need help to know it so they can move on. So that's the plan for that. Uh, we also did those shoes. I have never read that book before. I had it last year when I started doing Rooted in Reading and we just didn't get to it because November's cray cray and it's short. So we only have three weeks of November really that we do stuff. So um, I chose to do that one. I'm not sure I'm gonna do Turk and Runt this year. I'm just gonna, I'm looking at what the focus is on the books and really choosing what meets our standards that we're working on for that quarter. So this one, so much about character feelings and inferring what the character is feeling because it doesn't always come right out and say, I'm feeling really sad. Like most books don't say that. You, just like people, people don't usually come right out and say, I'm feeling really sad. You notice by the way they're acting, by the things they say. 
So that is what we did a lot of. I took a lot more time in this lesson than I normally do, but I felt like the kids were doing such a great job and they were pulling out such great things out of the story. I did a lot of turn and talk. I did a lot of think inside your brain and then share what your partner told you kind of thing. We started out talking about needs and wants because this book is all about that. And it explained kind of why his grandma couldn't buy his shoes right away. So really good story. Then the kids, I'm saying the kids really did a great job with it. Great insights, great information. They had great discussions among themselves and in the group as a whole. There were more things they wanted to share and we just didn't have time because we had to move on. After that, we did our birthday book for our friend that had a birthday on Saturday. We have two friends with birthdays next week, so I need to be on those birthday books like right away. <sighs> They're at lunch, like I said, and after that we'll have, we're going to read that uh, Geronimo Stilton book about castle fur, castle fur, castle, something like that. And we'll go to recess. After recess, we are going to do reading groups and they can go to the library and do AR quizzes and stuff like that. And then after reading groups we will do a scholastic news and it's all about animals that can i think they glow so that looked really awesome it's actually an october scholastic news but i didn't get to it and the um november and december are combined so there aren't as many of them because you know it flies by so i feel like i can take an october one and do it today that's all right after that is reading intervention time we are reviewing words with final consonant digraphs and then we'll move on to our controlled vowels. So pretty exciting. All right, I'm gonna eat my food and then I will check back in with you at the end of the day when I'm leaving. I do not have any duty after school for a while. That's good, so I can get some things done in the room. Like I need to start taking home this pile of stuff. I need to go through the bins, take home what I'm done with and leave what I'm not done with because I'm just gonna show you because whatever, look at the mess. The mess. I've tried to like contain it at least in two containers, but holy schmoly, that is a lot of bags of stuff. So I need to like go through the bags, need to organize them. You know, I need to do all the things. I have some Thanksgiving decor that I want to put out. It's not super fancy. It's just like I found a metal pumpkin at Hobby Lobby and I have some stuffed scarecrows that I want to put around the room. And I have a cornucopia that I got from the Target Dollar Spot probably two months ago. And I have some gourds that I want to put out. So that's what I'm gonna do. Alrighty, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna eat my lunch. I'm gonna change my clock because it says 1.20 and it's 12.20. So I better snarf and go. So I'll see you later. It's quitting time and I have gotten my little assessment done. So on one side it's addition facts to 10. The other side it's addition facts to 20. So we're gonna use that tomorrow to figure out where our kids fall in the spectrum of addition. Also, I'm working on making my little construction compare and contrast toolkits. <laughs> we did not get all the way through the birthday book for our birthday friend, so they opted to leave it here so we could do it tomorrow. These need to go in my extras drawer. I've got just random stuff on my desk here. Ugh. I need to clean it up. It's driving me crazy. Er, as my husband likes to say. Thanks, honey. I was going to show you. This little book that I made, array for Thanksgiving Day. And I'd be happy to share this with you because nothing on here is from another resource. <laughs> I didn't cut and paste from anything else. So this is all me. I have um, a license to use this old girl clip art. I bought the pie clip art last year for pie day. The fonts are licensed. Yeah. And and I made the story problem. So yeah, everything is me. So I can totally share this with you for free. So if you're working on multiplication, beginning, and you're working on arrays, and it is Thanksgiving time, I will put this in my Google Drive so you can have it too. So let me just show you. All you do is, I try to make it really easy. I have learned how to make books that you just copy double-sided, fold and staple. It has changed my life, friends. I love it. So you just copy double-sided fold like a so and go staple staple done okay that's how my fear factor book was that's how something else I made it <laughs> that's how this is oh my science lab book that was like that too okay so I'll just fold this because I've already copied stuff so it looks like this when you print it 
nice and pretty. And when you open it up, holy moly, if I can open it up. So you've got well, page one and two, there's story problems. So I have my kids use the cube strategy and they have a workspace down here to draw the array so they can figure out the answer. There are six of them in here because six story problems is enough for anyone, especially when you're just learning to do arrays. So there's that. And then just to make it fun, they get to color a pie after they do each challenge array. So just kind of for kicks and giggles and to kind of keep them motivated to go on because kids like to finish stuff. They really do. Because how many times have you heard, I'm not done yet. And you're like, I'm so sorry. You still have to clean up because we have to go home now. <laughs> so yeah, just print like that and done. Voila. So that will be linked down below. It'll be in my Google Drive. Oh, I almost forgot I need to take these home. So I printed stuff for my... I can't show you. Sorry, teasers. I printed stuff that I need to laminate for my thing that I'm doing at Christmas time. All will be revealed in due time, my friends, in due time. And it will be balls. Okay, yes. So I need to make sure. Whoa. I totally didn't make my box. Oh, well, that's okay. So this is a Mystic Carbo awesome thing. And I shouted her out on Instagram and... She was very touched and I felt really good because I made her day. Some of these things, I can't take any of it home and do it. I need to print stuff. So anyway, it's a comparing and contrasting stories thing. And we, our standard for second grade is to compare and contrast um, stories. How do I explain it? Well, I can't remember what the standard is exactly, but it's comparing and contrasting different versions of the same story. There we go. So I chose Cinderella because there are like a gajillion different versions of that. And actually on reading A to Z, which you have to have a license for. So if your school has it, you're set. There is a Cinderella standard kind of version. And there's one called Cinderella, which is another version of Cinderella. So I have already, I'll show you, I've already printed those out and I have folded them over here on my table see them right there but I need to stay full so that will happen I may just stay and finish that I don't know because who wants that sitting there in the morning not I said the fly so I'll probably go do that real quick before I leave because it won't take me very long but uh you just you don't print it double you can print it double-sided it's not really made to do that it's one of those it's not made like this unfortunately so you print it single-sided and you have to fold the pages in so here's what I do I take the whole thing I fold it all in half, I crease it, and I pull the pages out, and they're gonna be in order, and then you just turn them around, so they're like this now, and you put them inside the cover. So if this was the thing, you would, oh, I could just show you one. Let me go get one. Derp, I could just show you the actual thing, wow. Okay, so I copied them, clearly. <laughs> I folded it, I creased it. Here's the two stories, Cinderella and Cinderella. This is really cool, I think because this has a boy as the main character and this has the typical Cinderella as the main character. Really cool. You'll pull them apart like this. Put it one behind the other. Okay, like I said, hard to do in the air, but you can kind of see what I'm doing. Hopefully I'm doing it right this time. This has some really beautiful illustrations. You can also project these if you would rather not have your students just have paper copies of it, but I'm gonna have the students partner up and read these together and they're gonna work through their compare and contrast toolkits that comes from that Mystic Carbo resource to work on it. Okay, see how it's like this? So now all you have to do is turn it around and it's ready to go in the book. And you just creasey, crease, crease. And you double check yourself, make sure you're not a maniac and stapling it all wrong. Then you get your cover, make sure it's pretty decent. Oh, I'm picky about folds because I don't want the pages to be all wonka doodles. There we go. Okay, so then you just take it and you go whoop, straighten it. Another crease for good measure. Staple, staple, staple. Da da. Another book. For your kiddos okay 
pretty cool. So this thing, you know I'm gonna go all out and do like construction stuff. So stay tuned because that will be next week. So who knows when the video will be out for that. I'm trying to get caught up. Hopefully this one isn't too far past when it actually happened. Um, I'm getting close. So I'm working, working, working. My husband's going to watch the Kansas City Chiefs game tonight that he had recorded on DVR. So I said, hey, you can watch that and I can just put my earbuds in. I can still hang out with you and I can edit some videos. So that's my plan to get all caught up because last week was like three days. So that won't take much. That'll be one video. <laughs> Almost more like that. One video. Yeah, I'm tired. Okay. So yes, I will share this with you. I will share the link for this with you. I can, ow, those staples didn't go all the way in except for in my finger. Yikes. I will share the link for these if you like, but you'll have to have a subscription to their website or a free trial if there's one of those available to be able to use them. But just in case, I know a lot of schools do have reading A to Z. They're the same people that have RAS kids. That's their umbrella thing is learning A to Z and all of that falls under it. And there's like a science A to Z and a vocabulary A to Z, which we do not own, but own. We don't have the rights to, we don't own the rights to. But we do have reading A to Z and I love it especially for nonfiction. That is where I pull a lot of nonfiction things so that I can practice like text features and all of that good stuff. So really good. These things I need to like get colored paper and work my magic on them, but that's, that's later. Okay, I did put up my decorations, so let me show you those. They're just kind of here, there, and everywhere. Okay, so here's one of my little scarecrow dudes. There he is, and here's my books for the listening station. Who will carve the turkey this Thanksgiving? And one is a feast for mouse. Those just come from Scholastic. Speaking of, oh, I was gonna sit on the Scholastic order. Yeah, that didn't happen. Okay, and here's my new dude, pumpkin person. And I'll show you my Snoopy in a minute. And I have this little stuffed dude. I didn't bring all of them, of course. They're exercising across the hall. <laughs> That's what you were hearing. Scissor kicks. We don't do that generally. We don't kick the children. They frown on that. Look at my little Snoopy. He's so cute. Okay, watch this. Oh, wrong one. cutest thing ever oh my gosh I love his little laugh it's just so cute and I forgot to turn off my CD player I should probably do that where's the little turning off button oh my goodness you'd think I don't know how to work my own equipment oh nope there we go they all turn off differently that's how that works um I think I showed you everything of course I still have these little pumpkin dudes up these little guys are just kind of everywhere all over the place Alrighty. Yes. I think you're caught up on life. I have a couple of books that some poor students water bottle kind of exploded in her backpack and got her books wet, so we're letting them dry. I just have kinds of nonsense on the counter back here I need to put away. I never got to do this place value thing. I'm hoping to do it sometime in the near future. So I'm put my papers in here that need to be laminated at home. I can also be laminating while my husband's watching the game. Oh calendar change. I actually, ac actually, wow, remember to change to November before it was like almost December. Yay. And I changed my duty calendar too. So one of our lovely teamies made the whole year's duty schedule for all of us. That's a lot of work, man. I tried to do it one year and about killed me. So, so happy to give it to someone else to do. Alrighty. You know what? I'm feeling like staying in stapling because I just realized I have to go to I have a prescription to pick up and I don't have a choice because I got to do it. So yeah. All right. Such is life. Gotta pull up my big girl pants and make it happen. All righty. I'm going to get out of here because not getting much stuff done. So off I go into the wild blue yonder of Walmart. I will talk to you later. Good morning. Happy Tuesday, November 5th. I cannot believe that it's already November. It just seems like we started school and now we're in the second quarter. 
and we're in the shortest quarter of the year because we have Thanksgiving break and we have Christmas break. So it's like three weeks and then Thanksgiving and then another three weeks about, three and a half, and then Christmas. That is why this girl plans way far ahead for things because it goes quicker than you think it will. <laughs> and you have meetings and there are times where you don't feel like doing anything and that gives you time to do that. Last night was Kansas City Chiefs football for my husband. So he actually like DVR'd the game on Sunday and watched it last night and I had a laminating party. So I'll put some pictures right here. Super fun. It took me probably two hours to laminate that big pile of stuff for my cool thing that I'm going to be doing in December as a review before we do assessments for second quarter report cards. So I've got the ELA part done. I just need to cut things. Now I'm gonna have a cutting party tonight. <laughs> but then I'm going to create something for math and I'm not sure which direction I want to go. So the resource that I got is made by Corey Markison from Two Tales of a Teacher and Chelsea McCowan from Making Magic in Second. And I've been in contact with Corey through um, messaging and have kind of, we've kind of talked about some ideas a little bit and uh, she's going to share something with me and I'm going to share something with her. But um, I'm not... I haven't hashed out the details, I guess is what I'm trying to say, because there are so many different ways I could go with it. Since the ELA is a breakout with like lockbox and, and stuff, I don't want to do a math breakout because that's too much. Since it'll be in the same week, I want to do something a little different, but I'm not exactly sure how I want to do it. I've got an idea and I actually shared my idea with Corey and uh, she may be creating something and I may not need to make anything. Next week I'm gonna do that resource that I talked about yesterday at the end of the day, which is by Miss DeCarbo, Christina DeCarbo. And it is a compare and contrast stories. Oh my gosh, I did it again. Compare and contrast different versions of the same story. Why is that so hard for me to say? No idea, probably just, you know, teach retired brain all the time. But yes, so we're gonna be doing two versions of Cinderella like I showed you, and I'm going to finish stapling those booklets because I did not stay and staple all of them. I did a little bit and I went, you know what, forget that. I need to do things. I need to pick up something at the pharmacy. I need to get a few things from the store. Whew, there's a bug or something. And I wanna go home. So that is what I did. And I actually cooked last night. So last week I was gonna make chicken Alfredo, never happened, but I did. I did take the chicken because I hadn't defrosted at that point. I did take the chicken and I made chicken burritos last night. So those were very good. And my husband loved it. He loves stuff like that. And I can make them not super spicy for me. And then he just like lays on the spice for his, like slathers it in chili powder and all kinds of stuff. Okay, I'm almost to school and I'm probably really not making a lot of sense today. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go Got my losses, say goodbye for now, and I'll see you later. Hello friends, it is lunchtime. I just dropped my kiddos off, checked my box, delivered a dismissal pass, and I'm looking at my hot mess of a desk. Check this out. Okay, well it's a hot mess for a reason because I'm working on stuff. My lunch is beeping, so I'm going to grab it real quick. Okay, I need to move things. So I'm making, besides a mess, <laughs> actually putting something together for next week. Oh, the piles. The piles are everywhere. Okay. So one thing I'm doing is I'm cutting out these bookmarks for the kids. Move these. All right, let me show you what I'm doing. So I'm making the toolkits for the construction compare and contrast that I'm going to do next week. Inside the toolkit, each student will have three cards with comparing words and three cards with contrasting words. Okay, 
So we'll have that in their toolkit. They also have this, which is a compare and contrast paper to write on. Also, each partnership will have one of those Cinderella books and the Cinderella books. And I was thinking, how stinking cute would it be if I put them in these? Ha! Because I have like 16 of them and I only need 10. So there you go. So yeah, you know I'm extra and I'm okay with that. So each partnership will have a toolbox full of their little toolkit and I can put the books in here. And I might even put some special pencils in there too. So they won't need to get anything out of their cubbies. So it'll be good. It will save a lot of time. They'll be ready to go. So one of the standards that our second grade team is working on for a second quarter is comparing and contrasting stories with different versions. So Cinderella is one of those stories that you can find all kinds of different versions for. So this Mystic Harbo resource is amazing for this. When I saw it, I think she put it on Instagram and I was like, ah, that's perfect. I want to get that. It's $4, four. And like I said about the, the spider kit where you make the Play-Doh spiders, that was only $2, way more than that much dollars worth of fun. These are amazing. And I've just got things everywhere. I'm not even kidding. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I copied originally the compare and the contrast on both orange. And I went, you know what? I want them to be different colors so the kids don't get mixed up on what they are. Because if you're a struggling, wow, we're struggling if it's upside down. If you're a struggling reader, you might not notice the difference between compare and contrast, the actual words, and it might mess you up. So color coding is always a great way to get your brain to work a little better. I totally thrive on color coding. I mean, look at my lesson plans. Yeah, I'm all about color coding everything that you can, which is why my room is so bright, because I love it. Okay, I've got all these things. I'm gonna move over here because I do not wanna get any of this meatball stuff on that. That would not be good. This is meatball marinara. I'll show you a little shot of that. Pretty good. It's the Healthy Choice Simply Steamers. I love these. They're always coming out with different ones and there are vegetarian options too. And honestly, you could just pull the meatballs out of this and it wouldn't have any meat in it. But I'm gonna let that cool just a little bit. And uh, I have a lot of these little dudes to cut because each kid gets six cards. But I'm thinking I have a cadet teacher. She could cut stuff tomorrow. I'm gonna need to go because I just saw an email and I need to help the lady. So I will talk to you later. Good afternoon. So I had to cut my lunchtime chat short because I thought that I had someone I need to go help for the soil presentation, but somehow we got our days mixed up. <laughs> so we've rescheduled for tomorrow and Thursday. So the people that were scheduled for Wednesday will just still have that presentation tomorrow. And then the people that were supposed to have it today will have it on Thursday. So it's all going to work out just fine. I was going to start working on my Native American tribal things for our, our uh, little gallery walk thing that's coming up toward the end of the month on Thursday, but that's okay. It'll be fine. Maybe I can do it earlier in the day or something. That's okay. It'll all be good. I couldn't do it today because I didn't have the things with me because it wasn't supposed to happen until Thursday. So they need toilet paper tubes to make their Kachina dolls. So we'll just have to do that next time. That is okay. It'll all work out. The students got to choose what party they wanted to have for filling up their star jar again. And so basically they chose an everything party. So I told them that we had ice cream and orange soda left over from our Halloween party that we needed to eat. And they're like, oh, bummer. <laughs> so I said, that's a given for your party. You're definitely gonna have ice cream. And I also have, there are a few kids that didn't like the orange soda. I have a, I have some caramel sauce too that I used for the earwax. <laughs> so I have some of that left over. I said, you can have a caramel sundae or you could just have plain vanilla ice cream. That's okay too. I might have some chocolate syrup in my cabinet too because that stuff like never goes bad. So I'm sure there are probably some in there that never got opened, so they're fine. One of my little girls just made my day today. So she 
she came up to me and she goes, Miss Pine. I said, what? She goes, I love math. I'm like, yay, me too. That was so cool because I know that she was not a big fan of it before. <laughs> so yay, I'm pulling more kids over to liking math. Woo. I said, math can be really fun, huh? And she's like, yeah. Really good because not everything in life is fun, but we try our best to make things as fun as we can while we're learning. So I'm glad that the students are enjoying that. We did something called math doodles, something that I got from Teachers Pay Teachers, and I got a fractions and geometry one that I used last year at the end of the year with my students, and they loved it. So it's a two sided sheet and it's a half page so when you print one of them there's enough for two students it's a grid on the front side of the page it has some kind of a math problem or something and then on the back side are blank grids and you draw your answer in those so i made one that was very specific to our skill that we were working on which is number partners to 10 because there wasn't one of those in this person's shop. Otherwise, I would have just bought hers. But I just kind of modeled one after the way she did hers. And I made that to use for my class today, my group. So they can just work on the skill that we've been working on since yesterday. If it said 3 plus blank equals 10, the answer would be 7, right? So they put a 7 on the blank. And if that was like box number one, they'd flip it over and then in box number one, they draw seven of something. And I said, here's where you can be creative, friends. These are doodles. We're not telling you you have to do super fast drawing for math, like circles and squares and things. You can draw cats, dogs, bunnies, babies, smileys, clouds, hearts, stars, whatever. Make it artistic. So here's a chance for you to get to actually draw something. We also finished our October Daily Dendrite calendar, so we can actually move to November. And hey, we're only gonna be starting on November 6th. That's not too bad, actually. It's a Mystic Harbo product, and I'll link it below for you. She has, I think you can buy them by the month, but you can also buy the bundle, which is what I got, because I'm gonna use it all the time. It's really great for dismissal time. That's when I use it. So after the students come back from their reading intervention groups, they're all coming from different places. I, if there's something to pack, I have it on the reading table. And I'll say, okay, grab the papers off the reading table, go pack your folders, put your backpacks away and have a seat on the rug. So we do it that way every day. And they're really good at it. They're really fast at it. So while they're sitting on the rug waiting to be dismissed, because they have a good, sometimes five, six minutes before we need to line up and go out the door, I put the daily dendrite up. And we can usually do two or three, depending on what the problem is asking of us. Now, there were a few that were, how many words can you make out of Halloween? And I'm like, uh, hey guys, let's skip that one because we just really don't have time for that one. Since I was trying to get through October, I was going kind of fast. When we're working on the November ones, if that's what the, the day is, is to make words out of like Thanksgiving or something, we will do that. But the, there were two of them that came up at the end of the October one that I didn't want to sit and wait for. So I just said, let's just not do this one today. Because I wanted to finish the month so we could move on. So these are really awesome. It's no paper. You don't have to copy or print anything. All you do is download it and project it. It's amazing. And so it's a calendar and she has them marked by you know, the days of the calendar numbered and you click whichever one you want and it brings up a slide that has something to do like let's see what did we do today we had so many of them some of them are um, like visual discrimination like spot the three differences between these two pictures which is really good for training their little brains to spot little differences in words so if you have students that don't read through words because they're not noticing oh, that word is different than the other word. They just say whatever word it looks like from the first couple of letters. This might be something that can help train their brain to be looking for the visual cues. So spot the differences is a very popular one on there. Um, which one matches the clue is another one. So one of them was a Frankenstein. 
there were three different Frankensteins and there were clues like, it is green. Well, they're all green. It is smiling. They're all smiling. It does not have its eyes open or something. And you had to like eliminate the choices that did not match the clues to figure out which one it was. So I call it being a detective. They, we do a lot of like detective work in our classroom because they're using their brain and looking at the clues and using those clues to solve the mystery. So they were using their detective eyes to figure out what was different. Then there are several where it has like positional words. There are like these several things in a row and it'll say, Susie needs to stand in line next to someone with blonde hair, but they can't have a backpack or I mean, just different things. And you have to eliminate the choices that don't fit those clues. That's a pretty good one too. Also, these, some of them stumped us a little bit. There were wheels cut into fourths, and each little section of the wheel had a different addition or subtraction fact in it, and they had to figure out which one of them did not belong and why. Mm. So the one we looked at, it was because all of the answers had a two in it except for this one. Another one was, it was the only subtraction problem. All the other three were addition problems. So, yeah, they really, some of them they really have to think on. So, they're awesome. So, Mr. Carbo, I love you. You know I do. I shout you out. I give you little happy notes on my comments on TPT with my reviews. <laughs> I post things on Instagram and I talk about you in my videos. So, yes, I am a huge fan of Christina DeCarbo. So if you don't know about her and you teach kindergarten through second grade for sure, you should definitely check out her TPT store. I'm sure there is something or a lot of some things that you could use in your classroom. So I think I'm going to go for now. I don't think I'll have anything really exciting to share with you later. But I will catch back up with you in the morning. So I'll see you then. Oh, 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 oh,